What is up, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global back here with another video. And now that it's the New England Patriots offseason, there's no more games to be talking about. No playoffs, regular season, Super Bowl. It's all now offseason stuff. And the next thing that is to happen is free agency. So I thought it would be really beneficial to start with the Patriots, okay? The Patriots players who are set to become free agents, how much cap space are the New England Patriots supposed to have for next season, and which out of their free agents should the New England Patriots re-sign? So to start off, the New England Patriots are supposed to have around $49 million for this year's offseason. Now, according to sources, that should be the number as long as the league salary this year is around 200 mil. Now, straight off the bat, that is not a whole lot of money considering the Patriots have about 20 free agents, okay? And a lot of key players here, too, that are, are ready to departure the team. They're ready to hit that free agency market. And then you have to look at the fact that the New England Patriots still need to add defensively, but more importantly, they need to add offensively. So 49 million is a decent place to start, but if I'm Bill Belichick, I'm still finding ways to add some more money to that. So to start off, I'm just first going to go down the list of the Patriots free agents, and then we'll get into each of them, if I think we should re-sign them, or if I think we should not. So starting with the unrestricted free agents, we have quarterback Tom Brady, wide receiver Philip Dorsett, tight end Ben Watson, Offensive tackle Marshall Newhouse, guard Joe Tooney, center Ted Karras, center James Ferentz, defensive tackle Danny Shelton, edge rusher Shalit Calhoun, Kyle Van Noy edge rusher, linebacker Jamie Collins, linebacker Landon Roberts, safety Devin McCourty, kicker Nick Folk, special teams Nate Ebner, and also special teams Matthew Slater. Now, as for the restricted free agents... The Patriots will have Jermaine Illuminor, guard, and defensive tackle Adam Butler. And then they'll have exclusive rights to just one free agent, and that's going to be Keonta Davis, defensive end, who you never really see on the team anyway. So now that I listed everybody, I'm going to go back to the top of the list and go down each player. Should they re-sign them? Should they not? So first off is going to be quarterback Tom Brady. This is probably an obvious answer here, but of course... Sign Tom Brady. Resign Tom Brady. Um, of course, there's a lot of rumors going on about him, you know, whether he's going to play, whether he's not going to play. Go check out my last video where I say I don't believe Tom Brady is going to retire and why I think so. News also came out that supposedly Tom Brady will not take a team-friendly pay cut and that he'll be asking for big money for the type of quarterback he is within the NFL. Now, how much truth is to that? I'm not 100% sure. Tom Brady has always been a guy who's taken a pay cut. And if I'm Tom Brady, I'm taking a pay cut to get more help around me, okay? If Tom Brady's taking up 25, 30 million again this year, then there's going to be a lot of issues within the team again because there's Tom Brady taking up a lot of the money. And the Patriots, again, only have so much money that they will be able to use. Brady, of course, is the centerpiece to the Patriots offense. He had a very down year, but really, if you look into the facts and you look into the stats and you actually watch the game and analyze it, mostly, about 90% of the time, it has to do with that offensive line and the fact of their receivers. Again, as I told you guys before, the Patriots receivers this year ranked last in separation. Brady is a very vital piece to this offense. He might not be the most athletic, but he definitely gets the job done. And the part that makes him elite is his mind, okay? You will not ever be able to replace the mind of Tom Brady and how smart he is, he is on and off the field. So next up is wide receiver Philip Dorsett. Now, if I'm the New England Patriots, I'm letting Dorsett walk this year. I talked about this earlier in another vid, so you guys can go check that out if you want it you know, way more in-depth. So I'm not going to go as in-depth here, but... Philip Dorsett has been with the Patriots for three years, and the big word I would say with Philip Dorsett is inconsistent, okay? There's times where he'll pop off, you know, at the beginning of the season. Then, we won't hear from him, be, you know, middle to, to end of the season. There'll be times where we hear from him in the beginning of the season, then you don't hear from him at all in the middle of the season, and then right at the end of the season, he pops back up. 
I think we've seen a lot from Philip Dorsett over the past three years, and I think we get a pretty clear view on what we're going to get with him. And in the end, I just don't think that he's giving enough to the Patriots offense in order to keep him. Again, Philip Dorsett, guys, is a guy who plays for opportunity. He doesn't play for money. And the reason that he was signing with the Patriots is because of that opportunity, and he was very hesitant to actually do so. Dorsett does not want to be treated as a third or fourth wide receiver. He wants to get production. He wants to be a number one, number two wide receiver. And I just don't see that happening if he's going to be with the Patriots. I think that both the Patriots and Philip Dorsett decided to go in opposite directions. As for tight end Ben Watson, um, if you guys follow me on Twitter, which you should because I always do updates about every single thing for the New England Patriots over there. Um, but he's looking to retire. He already announced it after the loss to the Titans, so obviously that answers that. As for offensive tackle Marshall Newhouse, uh, let's get him out, okay? You had to have Marshall Newhouse because you needed depth. You know, Isaiah Wynn went down, and he did terrible, okay? He was a revolving door. Let's not let's not keep him in here. I think Bill Belichick knows that. Hopefully, you'll get Yanni Kajust back, the rookie that we drafted last year. Um, of course, he's a rookie. He was dealing with an injury that year, but I think anything's better than Marshall Newhouse. Let's not keep Newhouse in New England. As for guard Joe Tooney, this is a very complicated one to talk about because Joe Tooney is being said to be resetting the offensive line market. Okay, Joe Tooney was the Patriots' best offensive lineman this year. Over the past few years, he's been one of the best offensive linemen in general within the NFL and here with the Patriots. And this year, he got second-team All-Pro in the NFL. Out of all guards, he got second-team All-Pro, which surprises me in the fact that he wasn't able to um, make it to the Pro Bowl, which is interesting. But Joe Tooney is going to be getting big, big, big money this offseason by a team. And I just don't think that the New England Patriots are going to be able to retain him. I think that there's going to be a team that just outbids them and really is just going to be the team that lands Joe Tooney. I also think that the Patriots were aware of this even last offseason, you know, heading into free agency and heading into the draft. They picked up Jermaine Illuminor and they also drafted you know, the Froholt in the draft. Do I want them to re-sign Joe Tooney? Yes, I think that re-signing Joe Tooney would be a very vital piece to the Patriots' offense, especially their offensive line. I don't think that they should head in with any holes to that O-line, and they should really address it. But at the same time, don't be giving up, you know, 15 to the 30 mil a year for one guy. Next up is going to be center Ted Karras. And I think that the New England Patriots should sign him for depth, okay? And he's not a guy that the New England Patriots should go out signing for 5 to 10 mil a year. Nothing like that because he's going to be a backup piece. The Patriots should be getting David Andrews back, who missed this entire season because of blood clots. He'll be their starting center. Um, so, you know, Ted Karras isn't going to be that, that starting center. So don't be giving him millions on top of millions. If he's a guy that's going to want big money to be a backup center, then let him walk and, and get another center. Ted Karras has proved to be a pretty decent backup center this year. Of course, he hasn't done as great as David Andrews, but for a backup center, I think he definitely gets the job done. So for a depth piece, I definitely would say bring him back. Now, moving on to James Ferentz, who's another center. I'm not a huge fan of him, in my personal opinion. He, to me, is more of a guy that should be on the practice squad, and I think that that's something that Bill Belichick would also agree on. I just think that this year they kind of had to go that route with David Andrews being out and then Ted Karras dealing with some issues. So there definitely could be that possibility that the Patriots re-sign him to put him back on the practice squad, and that I would be okay with. But if they're going to try to re-sign him to put him back on the 53 then I'm going to say let him walk. Next up is defensive tackle Danny Shelton, and this is a must-sign in my own opinion. Okay, Danny Shelton, his first year with the Patriots, did decent, didn't make a huge impact. And then he, was a, he signed a one-year deal with the Patriots. So after that year, of course, he went into free agency, 
No one was really picking him up later that offseason, pretty late into it also, the New England Patriots decided to re-sign him. Let's keep in mind that his first year with the Patriots, there were games that he was going into the games as a healthy scratch. Mostly because of the game scheme that, that they were playing. This year, he came in and he made a huge impact, had one of the best seasons he's ever had, if not the best season, made great impacts both you know, in rushing the passer, getting to the quarterback, but also in stopping the run. He definitely was up there. He had to be the Patriots' number two, number three best defensive tackle. Of course, Lawrence Guy was definitely the first one. And then you have uh, Lawrence, or not Lawrence Guy, you have Danny Shelton and Adam Butler kind of in there between second and third best. The Patriots have had issues with defensive tackles over the year. I mean, Malcolm Brown, Allen Branch, Danny Shelton isn't the guy that's going to be going out there and getting millions on top of millions, okay? His market probably went up a little bit, especially compared to last year, but it definitely should be enough for the Patriots to still be able to bring him back. So if I'm the Patriots, I'm trying to get Danny Shelton back, assigning him to like a two-year deal. Next up is going to be defensive end or edge rusher Shalik Calhoun. Now, Shalik Calhoun was another late offseason signing by the Patriots. I only thought he was going to be a camp body, um, but then, you know, his name started popping up very late, you know, into training camp in the preseason, um, and ultimately, he made the 53. He's had some issues a little bit with injuries, which is something he's dealt with his entire career. Uh, his name popped out at times, you know, being able to rush the passer, never really made big plays or anything like that. But if I'm the Patriots, I'm going to let this guy walk. I think that they can find a better backup piece. They can find a better rotational piece. If he was someone that they could possibly sneak on the practice squad, then okay. Even if they were to bring him back, you know, for training camp and bringing him into the offseason, just to see if there's any way he can jump into a second year with the Pats and really elevate himself, then okay. But I just don't see him being able to make the 53-man next year. So, in the end, I would just say let him walk. Next is edge rusher slash linebacker Kyle Van Noy, and this is going to be one of the biggest ones, and this is another must sign, okay? You're not going to hear me say must sign to a lot of these guys, but Kyle Van Noy is one of the main pieces to the Patriots team, especially to the Patriots defense. I mean, the guy goes out there making more plays than Hightower. And Hightower is making millions on top of millions. Now, Kyle Van Noy is also said to be looking for a pretty bigger deal, pretty substantial deal. Um, and he's definitely going to, to get that from some team. Okay, He's obviously a Patriot. He's been in two Super Bowls with the team. He's made huge plays left and right, especially with getting to the quarterback. So he's definitely going to be a guy that is going to be harder to retain, but if I'm the Patriots, I'm making sure I find a way to get him. Now, this is just going to be like the same issue it was with a guy like Joe Tooney. If you get bid out, then know when your limit is. He's not a guy that you're going to go out there spending 10 to 20 mil a year on at all. But still, to me, Kyle Van Noy is a must sign. Now, moving on to Jamie Collins, linebacker. We all know Jamie Collins started his year or career off with the Patriots, did some great things, got too cocky, went to the Browns, did nothing, came back to the Patriots, started the season off stellar, was in the talk for comeback player of the year, defensive player of the year, and all of a sudden he just dropped off. I mean, he was making an interception a game, he even had a pick six, getting to the quarterback time after time, and then his name was just not heard. Now, that could be good, and that could be bad. Good in the sense of maybe his market now dropped a bit because his name wasn't being talked about as much. But bad in the sense of you're also not making these big plays. So does the team look to resign you, or does the team not look to resign you? If it's for minimal, okay, when I say minimal, I'm not just talking like one or two mil. I think that's too minimal but a decent amount, not going overboard, then I would say bring Jamie Collins back, okay? He knows the system, he's done some great things with the team, and he's proven that. Hopefully, he can just reestablish himself for next season, so hopefully Jamie Collins will be able to come back for next season. 
Moving on to another linebacker, that is a Landon Roberts. And before this season, I would probably say, let a Landon Roberts walk. But after this season, after seeing the vital piece that Landon Roberts became, seeing his connection with Bill Belichick and, you know, how much the coaching staff loves him, I would say bring a Landon Roberts back, but he's a guy that I'm not going and I'm not paying a lot on, okay? Because he's not a guy that's constantly making plays. He's not a guy that is good in um, pass protection or pass coverage, I should say. He gets to the quarterback at times, but his main purpose there is going to be stopping the run. He also, of course, showed some versatility playing on offense this year, which I think helps him a little bit even more with the Patriots. But I say sign a Landon Roberts for cheaper. I'm not going out and spending a good amount of money on him, um, especially because I think there'll be teams out there that will stupidly pay more for him than the Patriots will. A team possibly like the Dolphins and Brian Flores, who loves a Landon Roberts. Next up is going to be safety Devin McCourty. Now, Devin McCourty is not sure about retirement or not yet. That is still up in the air. So if he doesn't retire, then you need to re-sign him. Devin McCourty, great in the locker room. Devin McCourty, one of the best safeties in the NFL. Such a vital piece both on and off the field to the Patriots. You got to get him re-signed if he's going to be playing again. He was another guy that a lot of people feel got snubbed from the Pro Bowl. He was a guy that in the beginning of the season had an interception a game. I believe it was five games in a row if I'm not wrong. But he's making big plays left and right, okay? He's important to the Patriots locker room. He's important to the Patriots off the field, even on the field. He's the guy that hypes up that defense, gives them the motivational speech before they take the field. So again, if he doesn't retire, another must sign. Now kicker Nick Falk it's an interesting situation. He really got signed because of Steven Gostowski being on IR, his season being over, and Nick Folk surprisingly did really well with the Patriots, okay? He was a very accurate kicker. He kicked from a good amount of yards. He didn't do anything crazy that would put him over the top, but he definitely set his market a whole lot better than it previously was before he signed with the Patriots. And it's interesting because you have Stephen Gostowski who's coming off of IR. His season was over. He had to get surgery on his hip. And even before being placed on IR, he had issues actually making field goals. So I'm not going to say sign Nick Folk. But for me, Nick Folk is definitely a name to watch heading into the offseason. What do the Patriots decide to do? Do they decide to bring in two kickers and just kind of see where it goes? Or do they just keep him on their radar in case things don't go well with Steven Gostowski? Next up is special teams ace Nate Ebner. Nate Ebner, to me, is a guy that you sign for dirt cheap because... He's good in special teams, but he is not Matthew Slater good. I mean, not even close. But he is still a pretty vital piece to the Patriots special teams, and he is able to make plays, and he knows what's expected. So if they can get him for cheap, then resign him. But, you know, if there's a team bidding you out for even just a couple mil, then just let him walk. Speaking of... Of Matthew Slater, special teams ace. He's also a free agent. The big question here is retirement. He's another guy that, along with Devin McCourty, is thinking of retirement, not sure what's going to happen, says he has to talk to his family. If he comes back, you have to resign him. You have to, okay? Let's not make this another instance that happened about two years ago when the Patriots were unsure about signing him. He went and he met with the Steelers before ultimately resigning a two year deal with the Patriots. Matthew Slater. Made first team all pro this year and made the Pro Bowl. He had such a great season. He's such a vital piece to the Patriots special teams. Bill Belichick loved special teams. Special teams was such a vital piece for the Patriots this entire season. And really, going forward, no matter what happens, no matter what game we're playing, no matter how the season goes, no matter who gets re signed and who doesn't, special teams and how you play on that is a difference between winning and losing a game. So as long as as Matthew Slater is looking to come back, he's a guy that you have to get re-signed. He's another guy that is vital to the locker room and is vital to off the field. As for guard Jermaine Illuminor, he's a guy that I would look to sign 
if you are not able to retain Joe Tooney. And he's not a guy that you go out and you sign for a billion dollars and, you know, a high-ended contract because chances are he'd be fighting for that starting spot and also that backup spot if he isn't able to make it. So to me, I'd re-sign Jermaine Illuminor just depending on the type of deal he gets and just depending on, okay, what's going to happen with Joe Tooney. Next up, defensive tackle Adam Butler. Adam Butler is another must-sign for the Patriots, okay? This really is the Patriots' best defensive lineman for the interior that is good at rushing the passer and also good at stuffing the run. Now, obviously, he's the best at getting to the quarterback rather than stopping the run, but nonetheless, he's constantly making plays. I mean, the amount of sacks he's put over throughout the past couple of years, coming in as an unrestricted free agent is just amazing. The Patriots need a guy like Adam Butler to stay on their team, especially within that defensive line. Getting to the quarterback, constantly getting sacks, being able to get strip sacks. He's going to be a very special piece going forward as long as they can retain him. And lastly, as for Keonta Davis, He, to me, is really like a, you know, whatever type of piece. He hasn't really done much over the years. He got a starting piece at one point, I believe it was last year or the year before. But that only lasted a certain amount of time before the Patriots took that away from him. He'd be a really good practice squad piece. I would not mind seeing him on the practice squad, but I definitely would not be sold on him being on the 53. I think that the Patriots could get some better depth there. But those are the Patriots free agents that are hitting the open market in the next couple of months. So that's who I think the New England Patriots need to re-sign versus the guys that I'm going, okay, let them walk. But who do you guys think that the New England Patriots should sign out of these guys? Who do you think they should let walk? Let me know who you think and let me know why in the comments below. Remember that the Patriots have about $49 to start this offseason with. And that will include signing free agents trades, any other guys within the free agency market that they're not looking to re-sign, and also whoever they draft. So just keep that in mind. But please make sure you guys like and subscribe. But other than that, I'll catch you in another video.